it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome to my last solo submission for the hashtag till death do us craft Halloween series. This will also be one of my last cards for the Halloween card series of 2020. Can't believe it's already over. Here's the card that we're going to be making and yes it doesn't look like Halloween but wait till you see the inside of the card and see what we do. The first thing I'm going to do is take the dies from the Honey Bee Stamps Honey Cuts Threshold Card Die Set cut them out of navy. I cut the two largest door dies out of navy and I took the larger fallout pieces and I'm going around the edges with Distress Oxide and Blueprint Sketch. If I was going to do this card over again, I would actually do the smaller pieces because it makes the cardstock lighter. Those two are the same color, which is unbelievable in the end. So after I did that to all of the larger panels, I'm now gonna take my ATG and put glue on one of the, the smaller piece, or the thinner piece, and then glue it down to the bad side or the, the back side of this because we're gonna want both sides to actually be nice, the, like the nicer side, the right side, I guess, because you're going to, we're gonna be doing a storybook card for this. Taking my MFT on point precision glue, putting glue around that ledge, popping in the larger piece, and then putting the smaller piece on top. And this is where you can see that the smaller piece should have been the lighter color. But you live and you learn. So there's the door, and we are going to get started on the wreath next. So these all come in this threshold card die set. The wreath is cut, all of these are cut from scrap cardstock that I had lying around in my stash. And I used the larger die in two different colors and the smaller die in two different colors for the leaves. And we're going to make this card a little bit more sparse than some of the other ones. The options, you can put as many leaves around this as you'd like. You can add berries, you can you know, use it for every season. I decided to make it pretty sparse because it's a fall card. Halloween card so you'd have fall decor up and usually those are a little bit more sparse than say Christmas or like a springtime wreath. So I'm just gluing those pieces down alternating the colors and sizes of the leaves. Actually the two smaller leaves go at the top and then the two larger leaf dies go at the bottom I believe. So once I'm done that, then I'm going to show you guys another die that comes in the set. This is a really, really big set. It's the Hello die. And again, I used scrap cardstock to cut it out. I used purple. And I'm just putting the placement on the front of my card so that you can see kind of where I wanted it to be. I wanted it at the top because we're also going to do a mail slot and a door handle. Using the MFT On Point Precision Glue to glue the wreath down. If I had to do this over again, again, this is the first time I've ever done this kind of card, but if I had to do it over again, I would definitely use my Zig 2A glue pen for this because some of the glue seeped out and you can actually see it in the final card. I don't know if you can, I can. So um, just, you know, just a little tip, I probably would use my Zig 2A glue pen to glue down the hello or run it through a Xyron sticker maker, which I don't have. So once I put the hello on, that's when you'll see some of the glue comes out. But it is what it is. I think I like the way the card turned out, so it's all right. The next thing I'm going to show you are two of the pieces that I cut out in some gold reflective cardstock from Recollections. It was a scrap piece that I had. You'll see that circle there. That was a fallout from something. And I kept that because I knew that I could cut some small die cuts out on this. So again, using the MFT On Point Precision Glue to glue it down, I made sure not to glue down the middle because you can actually put an envelope coming out of it or something coming out of it to make it look like there's mail in the slot. Absolutely brilliant designing when they did this die. I love it. And then I'm gluing the handle on where I think it should go. And that is the front of the card. But we're not done yet because now we are going to, we cut a piece of white cardstock down. Now this was a five by seven card base and this card measures six and a half by about four inches. It's a little over four because there's kind of a hinge piece which you see here. I took that same navy color cardstock and created a hinge. I'm going to glue it to one side of the, to the back side of my card base and then I'm going to glue it to the card front as well, the back side of my card front because this is going to be a storybook card. I wanted it to look like when you open the door, you're gonna see trick-or-treaters and then you go to the next page and there's even more trick-or-treaters out in the grass. 
So I did um, a scene card and this is the first time I've ever done one of these storybook cards and I really, really like the way that it turned out. It was fun to decorate because I got to use so many stamps. Now you could do kind of a booklet and do the back page the same, couldn't be blue, but nobody really looks at the back so I didn't, you know, wasn't a big deal. I tried to actually do it before where there was a white piece of cardstock on the back and that got all messed up so I just used blue. The stamp set that you saw was a Kindred Stamps costumed, I believe it's costume critters, not costume crew. It could be. Uh, I will link it down below in the more information section when I get done. But I'm stamping it out onto a piece of Master's Touch watercolor paper because we are going to be using my favorite medium ever for right now, um, the Inktense watercolor pencils. So I'm just scribbling some color down on this little penguin who's dressed as a devil in the areas that I think that it would be the darkest, spraying out some water on my craft mat or my uh, glass media mat, and then pulling the color out. Now, I believe I left some or most of the coloring in. I don't think I left everything in, but I just wanted to show you how easy these are. Like I've said before, I'm horrible at watercoloring. These make life so easy to watercolor. I just am loving the results that I get with these. You can, do, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can actually do this and color it in, but you can also use the tip of the pencil and pick up some of the color and then color it in. So I absolutely love this. I just think that they're so much easier to use than watercolor for me. Um, and now that the little devil is pretty much colored in and now so that was um, let me get you guys the colors uh, now I only have the 12 count of the ink tense pencils and that was poppy red that we used and then ink black is the next color that I'm using for the pitchfork but what's nice about this there's no gray in this set but you can completely take that black and make it a gray so I was able to shade using one color of um, pencil which is pretty awesome so that orange is tangerine so I just popped a little orange on his nose and tangerine and then we're also going to be using tangerine for the pumpkin of the little dog at the bottom Again, just colored in the areas that would be the darkest and then pulled that color out. We're also going to be using sun yellow for, I believe, for the eyes in the um, in the jack-o'-lantern. I think that's what I do next. I also do his little hat. So while we are just, you're kind of just watching me coloring, um, I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this series. It has been so much fun. I hope that you found the other six, seven, six and seven creators. There's one creator that is only going to post on uh, October 1st she posted on October 1st and then as well as the 31st she will just do those two posts everybody else had picked a day and they uh, there's blog posts there's Instagram and there's YouTube videos so if you use the hashtag till death do us craft if you click on it in my title description you'll see everybody's that has tagged it that way on YouTube and then you can go over to Instagram and do the exact same thing type that hashtag in and you'll find even more inspiration this was such a fun series so thank you to Allison and Nancy for coming up with this this is it was so much fun I was doing a Halloween card series anyway and this actually forced me to do probably more Halloween cards than I would have done if I was just doing my series. So hopefully you guys are loving this as much and having as much fun watching it as we are making these cards for you guys. So I appreciate all of the comments, all of the, you know, the likes and just seeing all of the views that, you know, how many times somebody has watched the video. It's, it's pretty awesome to see all of the interaction from you guys. So thank you very much. Right, now I'm I picked baked earth to do most of the dog and it kind of blends into the orange a little bit so I am going to go back in with um, that one is bark the one that I just went in with and just pull that out a little bit and it is very very dark but it gives a um, it gives the contrast to that 
to the brown. I don't think that I like the baked earth as much as I do like the bark color. So there you see, I took some of that bark color, picked up some of it, and kind of brought it in to the baked earth to give a little bit more of a brown tone to the rest of his fur. So now you see I am picking up color off of the bark and going in and adding it. So his arms are actually going to be the darker brown but I'm using some water and toning that down a little bit. So he looks a little bit more brown now and it stands out a little bit more from the pumpkin now that I did that. I thought I did that, but I wasn't too sure. And that's what's so great about these. It's really, really easy to mix colors together or to layer colors. It's so, it's so easy. Uh, I wish I had found this before I decided I was gonna give up on watercoloring, but I do have the uh, 72 count sitting in my cart. I also found that they're the same exact price on Amazon as they are at Target and you can use your 5% off red card on them. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. So anyway, there are here's all the images that I'm just finishing up that last sloth down there. Look at how cute they are. And I love the way these came out. I thought they, I think they came out so adorably. I love the cat witch. That's probably my favorite one out of all of them. So I used my brother scan and cut to cut all of these out. And now we're gonna go back to decorating the pages. Now I'm going to be using, I believe this is blueprint, is this blueprint sketch? I can't remember what color it was, to just go in and ink up the very, very top. You'll see it in a minute. I'll put all of the colors of oxides that I used below. And I wanted to bring this down a little bit because this was probably one of the lightest colors that I was going to do. And now you're gonna see I'm just protecting the pages that I'm not inking on by using that scrap piece of cardstock. And that is actually, um, I'm redoing the craft room. So that was one of the pieces of paper where I was trying to figure out how many labels I would need to, uh, label everything in my organizational bins, which I will be doing a video soon on because the stamp storage is done and so is pretty much my Billy bookcase. I'm almost done it. So hopefully this week I will get to do, uh, I'll record a video and then in the next couple weeks I'll have it uploaded for the way I store my stamps and my scrapbooks. Okay, so now that I've covered all three pages with that first color, and I do believe that was Blueprint Sketch, I just wanted to make sure that I brought it down as far on, tried to keep them all three pages relatively the same height on every color so that it would look like a continual scene even though it's on different pages. So that was, uh, yes, that was Blueprint Sketch, and this is chipped sapphire, so I'm coming in with the darker color and darkening up the top of that sky and then we'll come in with seedless preserves after that. And I like to do this, I like to go in with the lightest and bring it down as far as you can and then start to layer the colors. So chip sapphire being darker, that'll come in over the top of it. And if I was gonna redo the doors again, if I was gonna do the darker pieces, I would do it in the chipped sapphire because that would probably give me a, a darker base color rather than the blueprint sketch. So now you'll see I'm just going back and forth and blending them together just to make to make sure that the sky is, you know, is even and blended out and there's no real big blobs or marks or anything like that. I figure since these are supposed to be little characters, it's probably getting ready to be sunset when they're out uh, trick-or-treating so I didn't want it to be a complete night sky but I wanted it to be that time of night where it's kind of dusk where it's getting dark and they probably should be done trick-or-treating. I may have thought about that a little bit too much but I, uh, I was trying to justify why I didn't have a night sky and it was kind of that blue um, you know fading into purple before it gets to night so that's why i didn't use any of the black soot distress oxide you can if you're going to go with a like dark dark night sky that was what i would do so there's the night sky in all three pages and now i am just taking that brush and just blending the blue down a little bit more now this is a crete and ink spire stencil that I'm using and I believe I'm using peeled paint to put the grass at the bottom. 
I wanted the grass to come up a little bit high because there's actually the sloth is actually going to be sleeping in the grass and I also didn't want to bring the uh, sky down super super far so I was trying to figure out how to mask it off and it doesn't line up exactly but I'll show you what I do and it doesn't really matter um, the colors really don't blend together because I just go in with a very very soft hand towards where the grass starts and it just gives it a little bit of a natural it's like there's a little bit of white but it doesn't look like it shouldn't be there so now here you see I'm coming in with the blueprint sketch and just going over it very very lightly and layering those up, which these brushes are great for that, putting down that you can get like really, really nice layers. It doesn't put down a ton of ink at first. You can build them up nicely. And these are the Rabbit Hole Cottontail Blending Brushes, and they're my absolute favorite blending brushes. So this is what I did for all three of the pages. I did, I used the Create and Inkspire stencil, which I'm loving this. This one pretty much stays on my desk at all times. And if it was a day scene, you could make clouds out of the top. The top is, if you see that there, the bottom, well, the bottom, that would have been in that picture, um, is where you could make clouds. So you can do grass and sky with one stencil, which is fantastic. So more peeled paint. I could have gone back in with another color, but this card was taking a long time <laughs> and I was just I was loving it I actually did it over a couple of days which you'll see in a minute because you'll see my nail polish my nails actually get magically polished <laughs> during the uh during the video but um it was getting to be late and it was getting to be a long video and I wanted to get this up and uh edited so I decided just to go in with that one color and some of it's going to be covered with characters anyway. So I apologize for the shaking. Again, the gooseneck camera. Um, so just blending out some of the white spots just to try to get them to not look so white. But there always is the kind of that little halo over where the sky meets the grass or the sea or whatever. The sky meets whatever. So I don't think that it... To me, it, did, it doesn't bother me, and I did get a little bit of blue on there, but it actually just darkened up the grass a little bit, so I think that it came out fine. I hope the recipient of this card does too. This is for a card swap, so super excited about that, and I will also do, I'm in another one for Thanksgiving, so I will be making uh, a video for that as well. Now we're getting into day two of the making of the card. So we are going to be inking up the moon, which is a piece of white cardstock that I punched out with a circle punch. We're going to be using Distress Oxide in Pumice Stone. The first one that I used, I think that was Hickory Smoke, and I didn't like that. So I tested that out, and I found that I liked Pumice Stone better. I'm using this makeup brush that has kind of a, it's more narrow, and it has longer bristles to give the moon some depth and dimension. It's kind of like the craters on the moon. So now I am putting that on there and then I'm going to go back and smooth, try to smooth out, blend out some of those bristle marks. But I think it looks good because it gives the moon a little bit of texture and it's not just flat in the sky. So I'm going to put that off to the side after I finish um, blending the colors and I'm going to start trying to figure out how I want to put the card together. Now I know I want the moon on the double layout page and on the single page I think that I want two of the characters. So I'm just kind of going back and forth playing with the design that I had in my head to see what's going to look right. And then we're going to go back to the double layout page and I knew that I wanted the cat on the broom flying over the moon. I just thought that looked super cute and I knew I want the, wanted the sloth in the grass. And I have two different sentiments from the Kindred Stamps Costume Crew stamp set. I believe it's called Costume Crew. Again, it will be in the more information section below. We're going to be using the Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink to stamp up the sentiments, which is the same ink that I use to stamp out the characters. I don't think that I said that in the beginning. Um, I stamped them onto watercolor paper in that Catherine Pooler ink because it is a crisp ink and it is uh, you're able to use Copics and watercolor and everything with that. So the first one that we're going to do is going to say trick or treat. I'm going to stamp this a couple times to get this to be a nice solid black. I thought this would be cute because this is like you know when you open the card it's like opening the door and this is what you would see in the very beginning. You see these two little trick or treaters saying trick or treat. I thought that was really really cute. So stamp that out 
I believe I stamp it a couple of times because over, stamping over Distress Oxide, the Distress Oxide may not be fully dry, so I wanted to get a very nice, clean, crisp stamped image for this. I'm going to wipe it off and then I'm going to open it up to the trifold part of the card and we're going to stamp in oh actually I'm sorry we're actually going to finish this first to give this ink a little bit of time to dry we're going to glue down the characters so first I take my MFT on point precision glue and glue down the little devil uh, off camera when I was finishing the rest of the characters I actually went back in with a teeny tiny bit of gray on his face so there's a little bit of a uh, you know, kind of like it gives it a little bit of depth to it and it's not just because even stark white images do have a little bit of a shadow. And now we're going down the second image that you saw me color, the dog and the pumpkin. And how cute are they? I think they just came out so adorably. And then we're going to go on to the two, the double fold page. And I knew, like I said, I knew I wanted that sloth asleep in the grass. So this is kind of like if you're looking out into, I guess, the field or out into the development, you'll see these characters are getting ready to trick or treat. And this poor sloth fell asleep while he was trick or treating because he got so much candy and ate so much of it. So the moon is in place and now I'm going back in and putting some MFT on point precision glue again on the back of the cat and then we're going to glue this little cute unicorn down. I probably should have cut a bucket out for her too but I didn't. So that's the car. So then we're going to get ready to go back and stamp in the sentiment and I thought this was so cute especially for the sloth. It says let's get candy wasted. How cute is that, right? Uh, perfect to go with that little sloth image. So now I'm using um, that, uh, that is a Misty Corner tool. They, it's that uh, toolkit that you can buy to just make sure that the sentiment is straight, putting it into my Misty, and then again, using the Catherine Puller Midnight Ink to ink up the sentiment. And I think we're gonna stamp it a couple times because again, the ink probably wasn't completely dry and I wanted a really, really nice stamp image on that. Which is the great thing about the Misty, you can double stamp things if you don't stamp it right or if you get one spot that's darker than others, you know, so you can fix your stamping. It's really up to my stamp game. So here's the card, you're gonna open it up, you're gonna see those trick-or-treaters, and then you're gonna open it up and see the rest of the scene, and there's plenty of room for you to write a message. The back is plain. I hope you guys enjoyed this so much. I know it doesn't look like a typical Halloween card, but when you open it up, it's a complete surprise inside. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of the progress pictures. Here's where we had, um, this is from day one where I had done all of the ink blending on the inside and then there's some still pictures of the cards. Thank you so much for watching this series and uh, leaving comments, subscribing, liking everything and I'll see you guys again real soon for another video.